process of maturity, especially spiritual maturity, is a journey. When you think that you've reached your ultimate destination, you then find out we're only halfway there. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Torah. Day number one, a Torah portion by you guys. We're going to go to Bereshit or Genesis chapter number 44. And we began with verse number 18, where we read, And Yoda came near to him, that is to Joseph, and said, O my master, please let your servant speak a word in my master's hearing. Do not let your displeasure burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh. Ah, Yehuda has suddenly become the skilled, polished diplomat and is speaking with carefully chosen words. <coughs> he has matured a bit from the days where he said, let's sell him. If he had any idea who he was actually talking to, things in this conversation would have been perhaps radically different. But again, he doesn't know that this man that he is looking at and speaking to in the Mitzrite or Egyptian garb and headdress is his own brother. Yehuda has changed. In just the last couple Torah portions, he has radically changed. Things are greatly different. He has been mature from being willing to sell out his brother for a profit just to get rid of him because he is annoyed with him and going down and living with the Canaanites and marrying a Canaanitish woman and raising a half Canaanitish family and then fathering sons with his daughter-in-law to now standing up as surety for Benjamin or Benjamin. How is this man so changed? Well, we read this progress, this situation of a journey of maturity in just a few select pages of the scriptures, but it's taken years. Uh, We are some 22 years now removed from the event where he sold his brother, or at least that was his intention, If you read the text, you will find that the the brothers actually did not sell Joseph. Midianites beat him to the punch. They heard him in the pit, pulled him out, and sold him to Ishmaelites. When Reuben got there ahead of the brothers, he said, "Where, where is he? Where did he go? Very interesting here. So his idea was to sell his brother because he was annoyed with him. Here is a, a thought, just a thought. Now, as we look at the actual siblings, we understand this, the descendants of these siblings continue on to this day. Most of this audience, you and I, are in some respect descended from, or at least adopted into the ascendants from the house of Joseph. We are, by some means, either, again, by lineage or by adoption, associated with the 10 tribes that have been missing from the land for about 2,700 years. So we would call ourselves, to some degree, the House of Yosef. Now, this is not just a name that we selected for ourselves or come to understand pertains to ourselves But there are some of our Jewish brothers in Israel, especially, that are beginning to recognize that's who we are and are publicly saying as much. That's very encouraging. However, one thought is that the descendants of Yehuda, the the house of Yehuda, the Jews, are still so annoyed (laughs) with us, and I can't imagine why that would be the case, But they are so annoyed with us that they are still willing to allow us to remain in exile. Now, ultimately, they believe that the exiles will all come home under uh, under the, the leadership of Mashiach, in their estimation, whoever Mashiach turns out to be. But there is a mindset, at least that I have discerned among some, 
is that the expectation of all of the missing tribes is that they will be already somewhat Jewish. They will have retained some of the Jewish culture or uh, Jewish language or, or tenets of Torah observance. The reality is we're not Jewish. We never have been. Even when all the tribes were together under the reign of David or Solomon, we were not all Jewish. Je uh, Yehuda definitely was Jewish. The rest of the tribes very well may have had a different skin color. After all, there were four mothers among those of Israel. And uh, while two were sisters, the, the two handmaidens, they could have very well been from a different people with a different skin color, a different race. So now all these brothers may not have exactly looked alike. There could have been physical feature differences. As they were scattered throughout the land of Israel, they could have developed certain dialects and different ways of speaking, different ways of doing things. That has been exacerbated in our day. We have been so thoroughly mixed in among the nations, it's hard to tell who is who any longer. So the idea that Yehuda could just say, why don't y'all stay in exile? It will be a lot simpler if you stay there and don't bring your Torah confusion into our ranks. That could be understood. Something else that Yehuda has been dealing with is the fact that Yehuda went down and he married into a foreign people. Assimilation for the Jews is still an incredible major threat. A dear friend of mine living in Israel said, more than the uh, rockets that Hezbollah has at our border, hundreds of thousands of them, and more than the nuclear threat that is continuing from Iran, we fear assimilation. I was shocked by that. More than military threats, they fear losing their sons and daughters to intermarriage among the Goim and losing their culture. Let's face it, if they do not protect their culture, their language, their, their worldview, their perspective, their traditions, their Torah understandings, they lose it forever. It will not be recaptured. So I understand the, um, the fierce protection that they have for what belongs to them. And then there is the Temple Mount represented by Benjamin. They cannot allow the UN, the US, the uh, UK, the USS, whatever is in Russia these days, China, or any formation of these nations to strong arm them into a peace uh, for land situation where they lose total control of the Temple Mount. Now, it is under Waqif of the Jordanians. It does have some foreign authority there, but the Jews still retain the ability to police it and to have some sense of oversight. It's a very, very delicate and tricky situation. And I've been on the Temple Mount, and I can tell you that uh, it's not a set-apart site. I've, I've seen kids playing soccer there. I've seen the trash and the debris scattered all over the ground. I've seen the nonchalant, casual attitude that uh, those who are free to walk up there have. And then the violence and the antagonisms that they use when someone perceived to be not of their own party or their own belief entering the grounds. But Yehuda has gone through this process. Yehuda is maturing. The Jews in Israel, they are maturing. They are growing. Their hearts and their minds are being open to the possibility of our existence. And they're beginning to ask the questions of how is this going to work out and what do we do with this knowledge? Yah will see and Yah will work. We bless our brother Yehuda today for all that he has gained and all that Yah will do for him. May Yah show him favor. 
Hit the like button if this is helping to you. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, Shalom. 